So my wife recently asked me to write up some tips so that her company can improve the quality of the video testimonials they're increasingly using in their comms. This sort of thing, one person sitting down in front of a camera delivering a vlog style piece of video content. This sort of video content is absolutely booming as you're well aware because it has the potential to engage so effectively. As human beings, we're all hardwired to really want to listen to what other people are saying. And so companies get that and they're including it increasingly both in their inward and their outward facing comms. At the same time, as more people work remotely or work from home, the most cost efficient, the most practical, the easiest way to get this sort of filming done will be for somebody to film it themselves, right? I've worked in production for over 20 years now, first in broadcast TV and over the last five years or so, pretty exclusively in the digital space. And in that time, I've probably sat down and interviewed on camera over 500 people and very often I've edited that material afterwards myself. And increasingly, I've moved from that side of the camera to this one as required to generate my own content. So I'd like to think I have a pretty good idea how to get this stuff right. That said, here are some of my thoughts then on how you could take your next self shot, vlog, piece to camera or video testimonial and really move it to the next level. I'm gonna break it down into five areas for you. Equipment, location, setup, delivery to camera and what happens after we press stop. But before I do, I wanna to talk to you a bit about mindset because I think if we get that right, everything else is gonna follow. Basically, I want you to be really, really positive about doing your piece to camera. I need you to find that mindset. Think, this is not a chore. This is not something you're doing under duress. This is something you want to do and something you want to do to the very best of your ability. So many times over the years, I've had contributors walk into the interview location that I've set up for filming. And almost the first thing they'll tell me is how much they've been dreading this moment. Now, I don't take it personally because it's probably the first time that we've met. However, it's the thought of sitting down in front of a camera that has really, really unsettled them. It's absolutely normal to feel nervous before doing this sort of thing. But a sense of dread is never going to be the best place to start, is it? If in any way that describes you, then we need to change that mindset quickly. Because if we don't, the whole enterprise is going to be compromised from the outset. The video content that you're going to spend time and effort trying to get right is going to reflect where your head's at. So we need to approach this with real positivity and lots of patience. That is absolutely critical. This should not be a five minute smash and grab that you get done in a little gap in your schedule. This is something that's gonna take time and in all probability, lots and lots of takes because even professional talent don't usually get this sort of thing right first time, far from it. But that's the beauty of what we're doing. This is not live. Nobody ever needs to see the outtakes. With our mindset right then, let's start that deep dive. And fair warning, I am gonna give you lots of information and advice and tips. Now, it might strike you that it's a lot of effort and it is going to take time, but just like so much else in business and in life more generally, it's the attention to all the little details that really pay dividends. Plus, of course, if you find yourself doing this regularly, once you've done this once and been methodical and learned what's going on, then it's going to be so much easier the next time you do it. You're going to record with the best quality camera that you have to hand, and that could well be your phone. Now, here's the thing. Beyond a bare minimum quality threshold that device needs to reach, the camera is probably the least important thing we're going to talk about. I'm going to assume that you're going to leave the device in automatic settings for both exposure and focus. And if it has some sort of face tracking function, enable that. You're going to record at the highest quality resolution and quality possible to you, bearing in mind what you think your total recording duration will be. And we'll talk about that in a moment. I mean, video can always be compressed after the fact. Files can always be made smaller, but you can never add quality that wasn't there to begin with. So it's always best to start at the highest quality resolution. You really should allow for plenty of retakes, however straightforward you think the recording is going to be. So beforehand, you're also going to clear up storage space on your device to make sure that you've got enough to hand. The last thing you want is to run out of space during recording or during the middle of a take. You might want to have a good guide about how long what you have got to say is probably going to take. It's just a guide, nothing else. And of course, it's not fixed. Simply time yourself, no camera, no other equipment around yourself. You could do it in your bed. You could do it while going for a walk. You should do it in the sort of tempo and flow that you would like to deliver the real piece at. And it should be easier because there'll be no camera looking at you. 
Now with that information in hand, if it were say two minutes, I would say I'd want at least 20 minutes storage space available to me for video at that high quality setting that we've already talked about. So a ratio of about 10 to one, which might strike you as a lot, but there are always so many retakes and there's always so much dead time. It's always better to be safe than sorry. And of course, it's probably a good time to remind you that before you do anything else, you need to make sure that your device is gonna be fully charged. If you're using a camera and you have spare batteries, make sure they're charged too. And of course, it doesn't hurt to have a spare SD card to hand. Even though so many people consume media nowadays on their mobile phone and they're doing so with the mute button activated, you still want to take your time and make an effort to record your audio as well as you possibly can. Because if they do listen to your clip, they want to hear your voice. And if they're struggling to do that, it can quickly turn them off and provoke a negative response both to you and your message. In many ways, a microphone is far more important than the camera or the phone that you're gonna to use to record yourself with. Even though you're almost certainly gonna be indoors when you do this, you really should use an external microphone unless you've got no other choice. Now, in this sort of situation, the easiest solution is probably gonna be a lavalier or lapel style microphone. Personally, I use a Rode SmartLav Plus when I'm filming with my mobile. I'm happy to recommend it. I think it's a great piece of kit, but I'd have two caveats. First, the cable length is too short really for anything other than arm's length selfie style vlogs. And that's not really what we're talking about in this setup. So I had to buy the extension cable for the SmartLav Plus, which really is long and gets over that problem. But then it's just another thing that you have to buy. Second, you may find the price beyond your budget, and that's absolutely fine, of course, especially if this is a one-off project. However, if you think there's any chance that you'll be doing something similar, or indeed any of your colleagues will be doing something similar in terms of video content creation, it may well be worth your company's while thinking about investing in something like a good microphone with a longer term view. And of course, there are cheaper alternatives out there, except I can't personally speak about the quality because I've no experience of them. Whatever external microphone you go for, it will almost certainly give you a better result than just sticking with the inbuilt microphone in your phone or your camera. But before you buy any microphone, just make sure it is entirely compatible with the exact recording device that you plan to use because there are differences. Next, you're gonna need something to hold your recording device in place and a tripod is absolutely your best option here because you can adjust its height so easily. Now, unless you're into photography, you probably don't have a tripod to hand. The good news is that because this setup is so simple, you can get by with really the most basic, cheapest tripod you can get your hands on. If you can't get hold of one and you don't want to buy one, you could probably get by with a mini tripod or something like a large gorilla pod if you have one of those. But bear in mind, you'll probably need to put that on top of a table or something else to reach the right height. Any camera is gonna have a mounting thread on its base to easily attach it to a tripod. But bear in mind with a phone, you are gonna need something like a selfie adapter to attach it to a tripod or whatever else you're using to hold your phone in place. Finally, you need something to sit on that's gonna put you at the right height. You don't want something too low, and I'd always avoid an armchair unless you've got a particular reason to include one because they tend to dominate the frame. I also always avoid any form of swivel chair because it's so tempting to involuntarily start twisting while you're in the middle of speaking. You do it without thinking and it's incredibly distracting. Also, of course, you don't want any noise from the chair, so avoid those. A nice, simple, basic chair that you're comfortable on will do the job. So let's talk about location. You obviously want somewhere as private as possible, which I appreciate can be difficult, but you want somewhere where people aren't gonna be constantly coming in and breaking your flow, disrupting you. You also want somewhere that's as quiet as possible, and this is absolutely critical. And it's not only the noise of other people within the building, it's from the outside as well. When you're weighing up a possible location, I want you to stop for a moment and listen. What can you hear? Can you hear passers-by? Can you hear road work? Can you hear planes passing? If you can hear any of that now, your viewer in turn will probably be able to hear it at some point too. And you want to avoid that. So you've got to take steps to mitigate against that now. You're probably gonna to need to close all the windows and if you've got air conditioning running, switch it off. So you should bear that in mind and make sure that the room's comfortable enough for you to work in under those conditions. Whatever the case, I'd always recommend having a 
little flannel to hand because as soon as that camera is turning it's quite natural to feel a buzz of nervous energy and a, and a glow inside and it's good to have something like that to mop the brow with. Again, as you're evaluating a location, I want you to take a good look around at the surfaces that surround you because that can make a huge difference to the quality of the audio you're about to try and capture. Hard flat surfaces like wood, ceramic tiles, concrete, especially if they're parallel to each other, do a fantastic job of bouncing back sound waves, in this case, your voice, and that causes echo and reverb. We really want to avoid echo and reverb. For that reason, you probably don't want to do something like this in a garage, even though it's probably got a good bit of space in it if you move the car out. By contrast, soft, irregular services break up and reduce echo and reverb. You may have seen on occasion inside a professional sound booth and you may have noticed that all the walls within that are lined with what is a sponge egg crate type material. That's exactly to do this. It's to dampen and to stop echo and reverb. Now, of course, in your house, you won't have a professional sound booth, but if you're surrounded by soft furnishings, carpet underneath, rugs underneath, curtains, furniture around you. All of these things will help break up those sound waves and help prevent echo and reverb. And that's what we want. Right, let's think about light sources. And this is really, really important. You want the light to flatter you if at all possible. Now there's nothing vain about that. Video is a visual medium and it follows a visual aesthetic. Generally speaking, we want to film under the softest light possible. Now, soft light is diffused light. And one way to think about that is that we want the light source to be as big as possible in comparison to the subject. Now, the subject in this case is obviously going to be you. I'm going to assume you don't have video lights. Why should you? Unless you're an interested amateur or actually someone working in video or film production, you wouldn't have that sort of thing. So you're going to work with available light. And in that case, it's going to mean daylight. I don't want you to try and film this in the evening using just normal house lights. That's not going to end well. You're going to need then a room with at least one window and that's going to provide your light source. Now, before you start filming, I suggest you probably want to switch off the house lights and just work with the, with the daylight that enters the room. If you've got house lights in the background, they'll probably appear yellow on screen, which is not ideal usually. Uh, and if they're out of shot, they could still be mixing with the daylight and provide a bit of a strange color balance, which could confuse your recording device. The orientation of the property, the position of windows, the time of day, the season of the year, the cloud cover on that given day, all of those things will have an enormous influence on the quality and the intensity of the light that enters the room in which you're planning to film. Now, one quick piece of advice is never sit in a direct shaft of sunlight because anything that that shaft of sunlight is going to expose will be very, very bright in the image compared to everything else. Likewise, I would never sit with your back to the window and the camera facing towards a window behind you. What almost always happens then if you have automatic settings in place is that the camera is going to be fooled by that very bright light source behind you and set its exposure for that level. That means you in the foreground are usually going to be a bit shadowy, if not completely underexposed. Generally speaking, two good scenarios for you are when it's a cloudy day, or if you have some sort of netting or opaque fabric in front of the window you're going to use as a light source. Now, if it's a cloudy day, the sunlight has already been diffused by those clouds. And by the time it enters the window you're using, it will be nice and soft. Similarly, if it's even a bright sunny day, if you have netting or that opaque fabric in front of the window, then as the sunlight comes through the window, that netting is going to do a great job of diffusing that light and making it nice and soft and you'll get much better results. So to summarize lighting, avoid sitting in a direct shaft of sunlight and avoid sitting in front of a window with the camera pointing towards that window. Finally, let's think about the background for your potential filming location. Now, given everything else you've already tried to consider, you may not have too many options left, in which case that's fine, but I still want you to consider two points. First, I want you to have as much distance between you and the wall or whatever's behind you as possible. This will help keep the viewer's attention on you, not the background. Now, it could well be that you are in a small room and you're a bit hemmed in, and that's absolutely fine. It's a case of best endeavors, just like with everything else. But wherever you're gonna record your material, 
I want you to look behind you and really think for a second what the camera can see because what the camera can see, the viewer can potentially see. Now, by no means does it need to be a plain sort of background. That may not be the look you want. That may not be practical. However, I want you to look at the background and think, is there anything that's distracting? By that, I mean big photos, big pieces of art, big splashes of color, text or any sort of sign that's legible. Basically, we want to remove anything that could distract the viewer, could draw the eye away from you. You're the important thing in the scene. It could well mean moving some furniture around, but that's time well spent. And just remember, if it's out of the camera frame, if it's out of where the camera can see, even if it's by just one centimeter, it's effectively invisible to the viewer. And that's what we want. A large part of successful framing is removing what you don't want to be seen. Let's think quickly about what you're gonna wear. Now, of course, you know exactly what's appropriate for your particular business sector in this sort of context, but in terms of sitting down in front of a camera, also pay consideration to avoiding something that's distracting. By that, I mean too colorful or perhaps as text or slogans that are visible. Generally, plain clothing can work well for you. And if you're very dark skinned, I would say avoid wearing white because either your face will be left uh, underexposed, which we don't want, or your white clothing is gonna be left overexposed, which again, is not ideal. Just take a moment to think where the microphone, if you're going to use one, is going to be positioned, because ideally you want that quite close to your chin, firmly fixed in place with its little clip, but also not in a position where it's gonna rub against clothing. And man-made fabrics in particular can be very noisy and cause a lot of rustle if they're rubbing against a microphone. So just make sure you're aware of that and avoid it if at all possible. I'd also try to avoid the cable itself being in shot, especially if you're wearing light colored clothing and the cable's black. So a little piece of tape could help keep that uh, cable tucked nicely out of shot. As I've already said, I want you to avoid sitting with your back to a window. And in terms of orientation of your device, if you're using a phone, unless you've been instructed otherwise, I would say to always shoot landscape horizontal orientation. But of course, it is really, really important that you check that with your particular brief when it's given out to you. The next two points are really, really important. Now, first, check and recheck that your device is level. Now, if you're using a tripod, it could very well have some sort of spirit level bubble built into it, which is incredibly useful at this point, of course. If you're using a mobile phone, and it doesn't already have it, perhaps you can install a free Spirit Bubble app. Next, you need to get yourself as close as possible to center of frame. Now, if your device has some sort of overlay grid that you can activate at this point, uh, a guide on top of the viewfinder, now's the time to put it on. For example, my Android device has a three by three grid option, which I would use in this sort of situation. So with you starting behind your recording device, I want you to frame up the chair that you're gonna sit on, center of the frame, and then I want you to press record and walk into the chair. Assume what's gonna be what you think is your delivery position, where you're comfortable, where you're gonna be happy to sit for a period of time, and then come back to the device, switch it off, and watch that clip back. As you watch the clip, it could be that you're either too high or too low in the frame. What I want you to think about is I want you to make sure that your eyes are above the horizontal midpoint of the frame, but that the top of your head is within the frame. What you want to avoid is having your eyes at the midpoint or below of the frame. You also want to avoid the camera looking up at you. Now you see this a lot when you see people filming from their laptop webcams and that view up somebody's nostrils does nobody any favors. So a good rule of thumb will be to have the lens just above your eye line. That's gonna ensure it's not looking up at you and also it's gonna encourage you to keep your chin forward slightly, which is gonna flatter you. Now you're ready to give a proper test recording. So make sure your microphone's in position and connected. Press record on your camera or phone, go to your chair and deliver your first piece of content exactly as you'd expect to deliver it. This is just a dry run, it's just a little rehearsal and a little test, so don't worry, but it's good practice for you. When you've given it a good go, stand up and stop recording. Now, this is really important. I want you to watch the clip you've just made and I want you to watch it critically. Really study it. 
How is the light? Are you happy with that? How's your hair? Are you happy with that? Is there anything in the background that's distracting you? How does your voice sound? This is really important. You might need some headphones to monitor that properly, but really do listen. Is there anything that's rustling? If there's a problem, you need to try and fix it right now. Fix it at this point and it won't be an issue later on. Once you're happy, we can proceed. Well, I promised you a deep dive, so I hope you took me at my word. We're gonna talk about delivery next. That's absolutely the most important part. Let me tell you why. If you've watched this video so far, I'm pretty sure that you want to make the best video content possible. And I want to help you make it. But guess what? You could have the best camera, pristine lighting, immaculately recorded audio, a mind bending location. But if you don't say something that the viewer finds engaging, it doesn't add up to much. Now what you're saying could be anything. I can't give you a shred of insight into that. But what I can say with absolute authority is that how you say it really, really matters. You cannot phone this in. If you take nothing else from this video, please take away this. You have to look down that lens and you have to look down that lens as much as possible. That lens is your viewer's eyes and you need to engage your viewer as much as possible by looking them in the eyes. It could well feel incredibly awkward at first, but you need to get over that inhibition. Never under any circumstances read directly from notes. Never. I've had so many people say variations of, I've just written some notes and I'd really like to have them right next to the camera lens. That way that I can read them and the viewer won't know I'm reading. Never do this. It looks dreadful. It's a poor man's auto cue. Never, ever do this. I'd even urge you not to have notes on your lap or anywhere near your feet because it's so tempting. And for so many people, it becomes a crutch that they find their eyes wandering to in the middle of their delivery. That's not to say you can't have to a greater or lesser extent a script you're working to, but you must try with all your heart not to sound like you're somebody who's just trotting out a memorized script or just reading something aloud. You must really bring this to life. The tone we're going for is relaxed confidence. Now, smiling's great if it's natural and it's appropriate, but there's no need to be somebody you're not. You don't need to be an entertainer in front of camera. You just need to be somebody who's relatable and who's speaking with authority. Now, you're a relatable person, right? And you know what you're talking about. So you've got this. If what you've got to say can be broken down into self-contained little sections, maybe answering a specific question or a specific topic, and those sections are maybe 20 or 30 seconds long, I'd really concentrate on making sure you have at least two or three takes where you deliver that particular section without any sort of mistakes, without any sort of hesitation, with a really good delivery you're happy with. Give your editor some options. In almost all production situations, and especially if what you're saying is going to be mixed with what other contributors are recording, then any one soundbite from you is almost certainly not going to be longer than 45 seconds. And in fact, could be far, far less. So that means that any time you are delivering a take, answering a question or addressing a certain topic, you don't need to say everything you know about that topic. No editor wants to receive a succession of staccato 10 second answers or statements about something, unless of course you've been specifically briefed to just say certain things to the camera. At the same time, if you find yourself speaking for maybe more than two minutes for any section or any given topic, you're probably in danger of drifting. This sounds incredibly obvious, I know, but it is easily forgotten when you sit in front of a camera. You need to know and concentrate on what the key information, the key messages are that your viewer needs to take away from what you're recording and you need to really work hard to get those right. Don't be afraid of stopping the recording at any point and really thinking and considering about what you're saying. There's no problem at all with that. Nobody else's time's involved, right? But here's the thing. If you stop, when you resume, check 
and triple check that you are recording again. This catches out even the pros sometimes. So just make sure that when you get back in that chair, that red record light is on. Two final points on delivery. The first, it could well be very useful for you to know what you are gonna say when you finish saying your particular section or your particular answer to a given topic. In fact, you may have a specific turn of phrase or word that you know you're gonna finish with. That can be really useful. Now, when you get there, when you say that phrase or those words, you need to say them with conviction. You need to say as if that's the natural end of what you've got to say. You do not want to sound like you finished speaking because you ran out of ideas or you simply ran out of energy. Second, when you finish saying what you need to say on any given section, when you reach that phrase or that word and you say it with conviction, I want you to say it and then I want you to maintain eye contact with that lens just for a second after you finish speaking. Don't look down, don't look anywhere else, just maintain eye contact after you finish speaking for just a second. It could feel like a very long second and slightly awkward, but your editor is gonna love you for it. Right, we're almost at the end and this is gonna be quick, I promise. The first thing's simple and probably blindingly obvious to you, but before you move your tripod, before you move your chair, before you do anything else, I want you to check and really verify that you've recorded the clips that you expect to have recorded, that there are pictures and sound and that they're approximately the duration you would expect them to be. If you've recorded a lot of material, you've been in the chair for far too long, probably the last thing you want to do now is review the clips in full and look at yourself, watch the playback. That's not what you wanna do. You probably wanna grab a beer and walk away from that camera. However, the only thing I'd say is worth thinking about is is there a very specific turn of phrase or a tagline or some sentiment or some idea that you really must include within what you've recorded? If so, I would say it is worth checking now before you put the equipment away that in fact you did say what you thought you did. And if you didn't, or you're not happy with the way you said that one or two things that are really the deal breakers in this, then you should re-record it now while everything's up and running. Now it's all a bit of a pain. I appreciate that. Watching, finding the clip, but it's much less of a pain now with the equipment to hand and with you in a recording state of mind than it might be in a week's time or two weeks time or a month's time when somebody turns around to you and says, you know what? We need to really do that again. So that's about it. Those are my thoughts and my insights and my pieces of advice about how you could hopefully improve your next piece of self-shot video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, hit the like button and consider subscribing. And of course, any questions you can put in the comments below. I wanna finish with this simple thought and hopefully it's something that you can draw a bit of confidence from as you approach what can be a bit of an intimidating prospect filming a piece to camera. It's simply this, you've been asked to film this for a good reason. It's probably that you know a lot about the topic or that you're very passionate about the topic. And ideally, both of those things are true. You may know more about it than anyone else in your company. And you probably know more about this given topic than a lot of people viewing the clip will. You've got to draw confidence from that. You've got to believe that people want to hear what you've got to say, but they'll never get the chance if you don't put yourself in front of camera.